Thank you, Trade Coffee, for sponsoring this episode and supporting my new show. With Trade, you, trade, with trade, you can discover coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade matches you with your own personal selection of coffees and conveniently delivers it right to you. Take the coffee quiz and Trade will curate matches just for you to be delivered to your door. First 100 people to click the link in the video description below will get 30% off their first bag, plus free shipping. Free shipping. Envio gratis. Free shipping. Spedizione gratuita. Free shipping. It's free shipping. Free shipping. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, Sola El Whaley is putting a spin on a Thanksgiving feast. It's time to stump Sola. Ooh! Okay. <laughs> Astronaut food. I have been so psyched for this one. I love space sh I love space things. I mean, who doesn't love space things? Apollo 13, first man, right stuff. These are movies about What's about space. the one with, uh, there's one where this woman just floats away. Um, gravity. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so how are you gonna make an astronaut Thanksgiving? Well, I mean, you have this freeze dryer machine thing that's not really been used, so now's a good time to bust it out. And it costed a lot of money, so <laughs> I'm very happy that it, we're finally gonna get some use out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's gonna be fun. Space, Thanksgiving. Two wonderful things. They make perfect sense together. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, so as usual, I can't wait to try it. I'm glad I don't have to make it. Cash, can you make the wheel like float away in post? Uh, oh, there it goes. That looks real. So real. Big money being put into that. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday of the year. Probably the reason why I learned how to cook. When I was younger, it was the only time my mom would let me cook because she thought Thanksgiving was really low stakes because it's just like salt and pepper cooking. I grew up eating stuff with a lot of spices, which can be hard to figure out how to balance. So Thanksgiving food was really how I learned how to cook because it is a lot of stuff and it seems really intimidating, but you're, you're really just working with salt, pepper, and herbs. So I want to go classics. Turkey with gravy, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green bean casserole, cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie. That's going to be our menu. And the key to Thanksgiving is really just planning. So we're gonna do this over two days. This is my prep day. Tomorrow we're gonna cook it all. After I make the whole meal, I'm gonna cut it up, portion everything out, and then it's gonna go in the freeze dryer for space. So astronaut food, I don't know what they actually eat in space, but when I think of astronaut food, I think of the freeze dried ice cream. And Andrew has a freeze dryer because of course he does. He has everything. So <laughs> this is like a really great excuse to use it. There's no way it's not gonna be delicious, right? I feel like this is the most enthusiastic I've been in a planning session because I really like Thanksgiving. I think this is gonna be fun. All right, let's go. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm gonna start by making my dry brine. I like to keep it really simple. Salt, you need to make more brine than you think because it just makes it easier to get it on there. A Little bit of sugar. I like to do like maybe a third of whatever my salt is. MSG, very important ingredient. This is a lot of brine I'm gonna do this much MSG. And then pepper. Oh gosh, this is, this pepper mill is intense. Look at how much pepper is coming out of it. See if that looks like how much pepper you want. I think I want a little more. Dry brines are no big deal. It's just like another word for putting salt on something and letting it hang out. Okay, we did it. Dry brine, prepared. Now let's break down our turkey. I always wear gloves. Turkey is so big and heavy that it's really easy to slip and cut yourself. And this will just help you hold on to it a little bit better. I'm really, really bad at this, like really just the worst. And I can do this, so you can do this too. Pull out our giblet bag. This has happened to me twice now, with the turkey and with the duck, where I thought I got all the giblets out. I brined the turkey, I roasted it, we went to go eat it, and there was another bag in there. So now, I just like, I like to really make sure, get your hand in there and make sure there isn't like a second bag of giblets, because it's happened to me twice, and I think we're safe. <laughs> now, all we're gonna do here is take off the wings and take off the legs, and then you just kinda let gravity do a lot of work for you. So, you can see, we're gonna go around here. This is where the joint is. So we're not, don't cut through the bone, we want to just gently cut the skin. So I have a really hard time finding the joints myself. So take really small, shallow cuts until you can see what's going on. And uh, see, look, we found it. We found it, a little investigation. 
If you're unsure, just take your time. And before you know it, you shall release your wing. Look at that clean joint, huh? Damn. Damn. There we go, we did one. We're like 25% of the way there. Next wing. And free the wing. So, so easy. It's really not that hard. Open this up, boom. Now we'll go for the legs. When you're pulling off the legs, it's really easy to get too close to the breast and then this skin is gonna shrink right up and you won't have a nice, beautiful skin on your turkey breast. So pull this up here. Make sure you have enough skin for your breast. There's plenty on the leg. And then make your shallow cut right here. So we'll open it up on the other side. Really shallow cuts. We're just cutting through the skin right now. We're not cutting through anything else. See this right here? That's the oyster. The oyster is the meaty, meaty part of the thigh that's right between the hip joint and it's super tender. It's like the filet of the turkey. It's really easy when you're taking off a leg on a turkey or a chicken to cut through that. So it's good to, to flip it over, see where that oyster is, make sure your knife goes around it. There's where the hip socket is. Use your thumb to get in there and release that meat. You don't wanna use your knife because that's when you can cut through the oysters. Now we're gonna give it a crack. See how that joint just popped out for us. So easy. Okay, we did it. Look at that. We got our oyster, we got it all. We're gonna keep our um, turkey on the crown, which means we're gonna keep it on the bone. So I'm just gonna remove this backbone and we're gonna use it to reinforce the gravy. So this is also, you're just cutting through the ribs here. And now we are going to pat this dry. You can do this, breaking down turkey, not hard. Okay, time to dry brine. So just be like really generous and get it all over. The excess will just fall, so that's why we started out with so much more than we think we knew did. You can do some spices in here if you want. I personally do not like that. This is salt and pepper cooking, you know? I wanna taste butter and turkey and herbs. Okay, we did it. Turkey. <laughs> now I'm gonna make my pie crust um, so it can chill overnight and we can blind bake it tomorrow. I'm using Stella Park's recipe. You can find it on Serious Eats. I think it's the best pie crust. It's basically a rough puff pastry. Couple things about it though, it only works with gold metal flour and American butter. If you use a European style butter, it gets all weird and weepy and all the fat bursts out of it. I learned that the hard way. Follow the recipe. So it's gonna be six ounces of flour and I don't remember how much salt and sugar, but all you need to remember is it's six ounces of flour, six ounces of butter, three ounces of water. And then, you know, sugar and salt to make it taste good. Whisk this up. Stella, don't get mad at me. Let's cube up our butter. So this is gonna be one and a half sticks. You wanna go for half inch squares. It's nice and cold, I just pulled it out. You want it to be firm, so it doesn't just like melt into the dough. We want nice defined chunks of butter to stay in there. So we're gonna get in here, and all you gotta do is smash each cube one time, just like that, and then set it aside. Smush, smash, smush, smash, smush, smash. Did you hear my burp? No. I just burped. I thought you could hear into the mic. <laughs> well, it's because I'm a lady. <laughs> Alrighty. We got them all. Now, add in all the water and mix. Smish, smash with your spatula until everything is moistened. This is going to be a little bit of a wet dough, but you're allowed to use as much flour as you want rolling it out. So, like, take your time at this point and make sure everything gets well mixed. Everything's been moistened. It hasn't come together into a smooth dough. This is shaggy mass. It's a word you'll hear a lot, so it's good to know what it looks like. We're gonna flour generously. We're gonna gather our dough, flour the top, and now we're gonna start the process of laminating, which sounds super fancy, but it just means roll it out and fold it up. First roll, it's gonna not really hold together at all, but that's cool. We wanna go until it's about a half an inch. You'll see as we do these folds, it's gonna come together. It will start to look like pie dough. See, this is the second round, and you can already see, like, we have these nice sheets of butter that are going to make our pie dough, like, super flaky. Can you see the layers? Now we are going to do our final roll. I like to kind of make it a circle. So if we start out with a circle, it's easier to end up with a circle. So you want to go for an eighth of an inch thick. If you go too thick, it'll be really tough. Okay, guys, I think we did it. So far, so good, huh? 
I do really like Thanksgiving. I feel like I have an energy in this episode. See, now it's cool. You can use all the flour you want because you just go back and you dust it off. It's a lot easier to do this than to scrape dough that's been stuck to the counter. And it's really fun because you feel like an archeologist. Oh, what did I find? If this was a dinosaur, what would it be called? Pyceratops? Uh, <laughs> that's much better than Pyrannosaurus Rex. I like Pyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex too. Kendall, what's yours? Tell me! What is it? <laughs> I like it. Okay. Look at that. Whoa. This dough is so sturdy, but it's gonna bake up so tender and flaky. It's incredible. Stella's a magician. Just like be gentle, make sure it all gets in there. I feel like that's good. Now we're gonna clean up the edges. I want to cut it so I have like maybe a quarter inch past this rim. So you just go poop. And then these scraps, you don't have to throw them out. It's like so much good butter in there. What my mom would always do is just like roll it out, add a bunch of cinnamon sugar and bake it off as like a little tea cookie. Now we didn't give this dough a rest at all. It's gonna rest after we roll it out. So it might shrink a little bit. So you, that's why you don't wanna cut it right up along this edge. We want to give it some room so if it does shrink, no problem. I prefer just like the simplest edge. At the end of the day, we're going to slice this up and freeze dry it, so it doesn't matter that much. And now I'm going to let this rest overnight. And tomorrow morning, first thing I'm going to do is blind bake this crust. And then we're going to get our pumpkin filling in there. Great. Hi. Oh, God. <laughs> OK, so I'm up here right now because I need multiple burners to pull this off in a in a relatively, you know, short amount of time. So Andrew let me borrow his kitchen. We're gonna be cooking up here. We're gonna have a lot of pots boiling, simmering, and uh, let's, it's gonna be great. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's Halloween today. It's not, what day is it today? <laughs> I don't know. To get started, I'm going to roast my backbone and neck bone at about 400 degrees until it gets nice and brown and we render out some of this fat and we're going to reinforce some chicken stock for our gravy. This is my pie crust that I made yesterday. I'm going to blind bake it now. Listen to Stella. This is the way she likes to blind bake. We're gonna line it with foil completely. You want the foil right up against the crust. By lining the foil on top and having it on top of an aluminum baking sheet, we're gonna get really good heat distribution from the top and the bottom. I really love this trick that Stella does of lining it with sugar. Sugar weighs more than beans or rice, but it's not as heavy as pie weights. I noticed sometimes those metal pie weights, they leave little indents in your pie crust because they are so heavy. And then as a nice byproduct, you also get, this sugar is gonna get like nicely toasted, which kind of caramelizes the flavor of the sugar and takes an edge off the sweetness. It'll be a great sugar to use in our pie filling as well. You do need a lot. Make sure you fill it up to the tippy top. We're gonna use the whole bag. Next, really important, take a spoon and just make sure that the sugar is getting into the corners. And we're gonna bake this at 350 for 60 to 70 minutes. One of the benefits of using a glass pie pan is that we can lift it up and check and see how the color's looking throughout the baking. All right, here we go, going in. Okay, hey Siri, set a 60 minute timer. Did you hear me? Siri. Hey Siri, you doing it? Okay, one hour. She's doing it. All right, so next up, I'm gonna get my potatoes. Relax, relax Siri. Uh, we got, we're good. We're good, Siri. I'm gonna start simmering my potatoes for mashed potatoes. I'm gonna use russets. So let me, uh, oh God, let me go get some water. I'll be right back. Do I seem weird? I feel weird. Boiling our potatoes skin on is gonna keep them from getting too, like absorbing too much moisture and getting wet. And we're gonna put like a lot of salt in here, like a lot of salt. Because it's also skin on, it's not gonna all penetrate in there, so it's gonna be okay. Burner one, activated. Let's see how many we end up using. Okay, our sweet potatoes. I'm gonna make a little sweet potato casserole. I like to cook my sweet potatoes right in the milk. The milk's gonna concentrate and give like nice little toffee notes to it. So we're gonna go for like one inch squares. And uh, you don't really have to get too crazy here. We just want them to be relatively even so they cook in about the same time. I think I'm gonna go a little crazy and do cream and milk. Wild. You know, it's supposed to be rich and luxurious. 
just about covered. That's gonna be good. Big, big pinch of salt. And I'm gonna get this cooking on low-ish. That's gonna hang out, do its thing. I guess let's get our mushrooms going for our casserole. Got some cremini mushrooms. I go ahead and wash my mushrooms because we're gonna cook out all that moisture, so it's gonna be fine. I want a clean mushroom. They're grown in manure. I know it's sterilized manure, but it's still manure. I like to wash my mushrooms. I don't care if it's controversial. They're four, four burners. Four yeah. burners. And we're not even really getting started yet. I want these mushrooms to get really nice and brown. Common thing with mushrooms is people undercook them and they don't, haven't really like had a chance to develop their flavor, you know? So we are not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna chop and drop. Oof, it's hot in here. Really, really getting steamy, guys. Two ovens on four burners. It's wild. Okay, the mushrooms are in. I also, some people do not salt right away. I salt right away because I want that moisture to draw out. I want to draw out all the moisture at this point. It's going to get real sizzly and look really wet and you're going to think I'm nuts and then that moisture is going to cook out. It's going to brown. It's going to get super concentrated. So stick with me guys. It's going to work. I promise. Ooh, you know what? We should put a little garlic in there. Yeah. Let's do a little thyme. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to trim my green beans. I want to trim off the ends and cut them into one inch pieces. I'm going to check out my sweet potatoes. How are you doing? They are doing great. The milk is getting hot. You are getting, you're getting a little rowdy. I'm gonna turn you down. Shh. Oh, oh, listen. It sounds different, right? You can hear it's more sizzly because the moisture is cooking off. And now we're switching gears and we're gonna go into brown town. Let's bring our water over. Okay, so Blanche, what is a Blanche? What is a Blanche? What is a Blanche? So blanching is when you cook our green beans in boiling salted water until they just get crisp, tender, and like bright green. And that's really the best indicator that you're either done or you're very, very close. Look, it's already brightening up. Like the second it hits the water, it starts to look more fresh, more crisp, more appetizing. You need a lot of ice water because you want this to cool down fast. Look, our mushrooms are getting brown. You guys, I feel like there are so many of you watching who didn't believe in me. What is that? Okay, I feel good about that. Our green beans are ready. These are really close. Mmm, those are good. We're gonna turn them off and set them aside for now. We're gonna come back and make our mushroom sauce in there. Okay, so I got my turkey back, turkey neck, nice and golden. We've rendered out some fat, which is nice. I'm gonna put this in the pressure cooker along with some aromatics. We're gonna start with regular old box chicken stock. The neck and back alone isn't enough to bring us, you know, enough flavor and give us enough stock. So we're just gonna make this box stuff taste even better. We're gonna put our neck in there. We're gonna add a little carrot, a little celery, some thyme, garlic. This is gonna go in the pressure cooker one hour and then we're gonna use this for our stuffing and our gravy. I'm gonna grab my pie crust. It's been blind baking. Ooh. All right. So the sugar's nice and toasty. I'm gonna let it cool before I try and remove that. But you can see we have good golden brown color. I'm gonna set this aside for now. Next, I'm gonna work on the stuffing. I grew up with stuffing from the box, so that's kind of my philosophy when I make stuffing. I like to make, I think of it as three parts. We're gonna make croutons, add mix-ins, and then moisture. So for the croutons, this is something you wanna do with stale bread. This is a few days old and I'm gonna cut up these into really nice cubes, toss it with some seasoning, and we're gonna use some good olive oil. I have a little bouillon that I think I'm gonna put in there, which I think will be awesome. Really channel those stovetop vibes. I'm also gonna add some paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and thyme, and a touch of MSG. Little pepper and salt. I'm just gonna toss and taste and toss and add more and adjust until it tastes good. I think that's good. I'm gonna bake this until it's nice and toasty and golden. We're gonna go in there and toss it a couple of times, make sure it's even, and this will be the start of our stuffing. So for the mashed potatoes, you always wanna add hot, hot cream and butter to your mash. It'll just make it for a nice, smooth, silky consistency. It'll incorporate a lot better. So I'm gonna warm up some cream and just let that come up to a simmer. I'm gonna add a little garlic, a sprig of thyme, a little bay leaf, and we'll add some butter too. I'm also gonna throw in some whole peppercorns in there. Don't boil over, buddy. Now. While we were at lunch, our potatoes finished cooking. So I'm gonna peel them 
and get them started mashing. So it's good to peel your potatoes while they're hot. They, they get really grainy when they cool down and if you try and do it then. Ooh, do you guys have a ricer? Oh, under one of these? Bottom. Ah, my cream. Whoops. You're fine. Our potatoes, they're going in. Smush, oh, so satisfying. What's great about smushing your potatoes in a ricer, it's just going through one time rather than like when you use a potato masher and you just mash and you mash and you mash. You're less likely to get like a gloopy, starchy texture. All right, let us strain this mixture. Okay, so we're gonna pour our hot cream and butter situation. I don't know if we're gonna need all of it. We'll just start with a little. Actually, maybe we do. Maybe we do want it all. Ugh. A little more salt, and that's it. We're there. Wow. Okay, so my pie has had a moment to cool, and our croutons are out. Look, so crunchy. So crunchy. That bouillon is magic. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up my filling to put in the pie crust. This is some butternut squash that Kendall roasted and pureed for me earlier. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you so much. Okay, so we need condensed milk, 19 ounces. I don't know if this is 19 ounces, but if it isn't, I'm gonna just um, split the difference with some cream. Sorry, Stella, she wouldn't like this. But there are some pastries where you can kind of fudge and custards are one of them, and this is essentially a custard. Let's split the difference with five ounces of cream, four ounces of brown sugar, and we're gonna do some vanilla. This is an okay thing to eyeball. Ginger, about one and a half teaspoons. Cinnamon, hello. Are the memory cards you wanted for the camera? Yes. Are you guys shooting? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are there memory cards in the camera? Classic Thanksgiving prank. Classic. Classic. <laughs> okay, this, that's it, that's our pie filling. We're gonna whisk it up and pour it into the crust and bake it and pie. Family for ah. <laughs> ah, Happy April Thanksgiving. You know what I've got? What? A couple of cockroaches. No! <laughs> Why? You I've been. Those I just keep them in my pocket now. Okay, here is our pie. It's going in the oven. How do you prevent cracks? I found out in Thank a really, you. really hard way that it's the cracks and custards is because the temperature fluctuates too much. In your so, oven? No, no, when you take it out. So oh. Really hot, really cold, too All right, stuffing. Mix in time. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? What, even is that? what did you do? <laughs> what, is, what is, is that a trash can? No, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, made for yeah. an air popper? Yeah, it's made for popping people there. Shoot, shoot me in the face. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite aggressive. Um, all right, we're just gonna sweat our veg. So we've got in here, we've got onion, carrot, celery, sage, a little thyme, pepper, salt, apple. I'm gonna throw some kale in there. Andrew made a million deli meats, so we're gonna put some cubes of mortadella in there. I think that's gonna be delicious. There's just like a whole fridge filled with deli meats. That episode will probably air before that one, so you guys, you guys will know where it's from. It's like an Easter egg. We'll pull out our sage. It's done what we needed it to do. Our croutons going in. Our mix-ins, ooh, that's heavy. <laughs> Turkey stock. My mom always added milk, so I'm gonna add some milk. And a couple of eggs. Mm-hmm, I think that's good. We're gonna put it in a dish and bake it. Mortadella stuffing. Not something I've had before. This place really does make dreams come true. Okay, I like a crunchy top, so I like to kind of make sure the top isn't too smooth, so you got more like craggly bits that are gonna get nice and brown. We're gonna bake this, and we have our stuffing. Now we're gonna cook our turkey. So I have a unique way of cooking my turkey. I think it's the best way to cook turkey. Um, I'm going to brown all the pieces in oil, one by one, put it on a tray, and then after everybody's been browned, fill this up with some butter and butter baste every piece, and then it's gonna get roasted in the oven. It's a teamwork, makes the dream work. Okay, I'm gonna make cranberry sauce. 
which is very, 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 very easy. You don't need a recipe. You need cranberries. We're gonna do some sugar. We're gonna use that toasted sugar that we had from weighing down our pie crust. You need kind of a lot of sugar because cranberry is tart. We're gonna do the juice of an orange and I'm gonna put some of the peel in there too. That's gonna just keep going until they burst. And then in the meantime, let's get our mushroom gravy happening for our green bean casserole. So our mushrooms are looking really good. I plucked out the thyme. I'm gonna go get these uh, cloves of garlic too. You don't wanna bite into that. Uh huh. You're, you're hungry. Here, there's another clove. <laughs> the spatula is going right back in. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a roux, which is a combination of butter and flour, and we're gonna use that to thicken up some milk, and that's basically all cream of mushroom soup is. So for my butter, I'm gonna use some of this butter that we used to baste our turkey, because it's got sage in there and garlic and turkey fat, so it is really tasty. I normally did one-to-one -one butter to flour, and then my husband made some gravy the other day and it was like the creamiest, best gravy I ever had. And he said it's because he does, does a little extra fat. And the difference in the texture was pretty incredible. So I'm gonna do that too. Gonna follow Ham's lead here. Andrew. This is our mushroom cream sauce. We're gonna season it up with a little salt and pepper. That's good. We did it. All right, let's fry shallots. Shall we? Shallot we? Kendall already sliced and peeled my shallots. When you're frying, frying shallots, it goes from like done to overdone really fast. So make sure you have your strainer and your bowl set up before you even get started. We are gonna dump all of our shallots in. We're gonna cover it with oil three quarters of the way. You start with cold oil, do it on high heat, stirring constantly. This is gonna be our crunchy onion top. We're replacing the Frenches, which are really delicious, but I think this is better. Our cranberry sauce has popped. Let's give it a taste. I know it looks really liquidy right now, but there's a lot of pectin in the skin, so it'll thicken up as it cools. Mmm, that's good. Ooh, look, it's getting brown. It's getting brown, guys. When we get here, it goes pretty fast. Stay vigilant. And I think the shallots removed from heat. And here, very, very important. Spread it out as soon as you can because it will carry over and get burnt. While it's still warm, I'm gonna hit it with some salt. Now we're gonna put everything together for our green bean casserole. Green beans, folded together. Gonna put a handful of our crispy onions inside and then the rest is gonna go on top. So we got lots of onion stuff happening. Pour it into our dish. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Sprinkle some fried shallots on top. This is going in the oven until bubbly. Wait, we didn't show off our stuffing. So you may notice a lot of the crispy top is missing. There's a reason for that. Yeah, he took all of the crispy top. I guess there's some crispy top, but there we go, stuffing. You know what, we should also, we should also get a shot of our cranberry sauce all done. Cranberry sauce, done. We got our sweet potato cooked in milk. Gonna add a little brown sugar. Take it up a notch, a little cayenne. One egg, so I'm gonna mush this together until it's really nice and smooth. We'll chop up our pecans, fold them in, top with marshmallows, sweet potato casserole. <laughs> it's going in the oven. Gravy. Here is some of our butter from when we basted our turkey. We're gonna add some flour, whisk it up, make a roux. You guys know how to do this now. Everybody knows how to do this. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Guys, we did it. Shut it down. Here we've got the spread, lovely, you know. This so far looks familiar, but this is not appropriate for taking to space. So we need to let all of this cool down and we're gonna portion it and freeze dry it tomorrow. Come on, little turkey. So we have our Thanksgiving leftovers. As you can see, we couldn't not dig into some of it while it was hot. So that's why there's um, spoonfuls of casserole missing. The freeze dryer has arrived. All right, let's start. I'm gonna start with the mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, green bean casserole. What's gonna happen to this in the freeze dryer? I don't know. All right, here we go. One tray going in. Now let's do our sweet potatoes, stuffing. We'll carve a few slices of turkey. Going in, going in. Let's just 
make some slices of pie, thin slices, and then that's it. This is what you should do with your leftovers. Just freeze dry it, it'll last forever. And then I guess this guy goes on. I hope this is okay. I hope this does okay. Okay, start. That's it. All right, we did it. When we come back tomorrow, hopefully we will have some freeze dried Thanksgiving dinner ready to take to space. Astronaut Thanksgiving. Astronaut Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for astronauts. Well, I wish we could send this to some astronauts up in the ISS. That would be nice. That would be cool. Very expensive. Maybe we should have figured that out next year. Next year. All right, so everything's super dry and crisp and... It's kind of insane. What are you starting with? I really want to try the potatoes. Let's try the potatoes. They, yeah, I'm like... Oh, they're like powder. That's crazy. Mmm. Uh -huh. Mmm. It's like concentrated potatoes. It just tastes like potato. All right, I'm going to try the green bean casserole. It's so crisp and light. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's real good. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think I like this better than regular green bean casserole. I would take this for like dinner to go. Mm -hmm. Just like pack in the bag, snack on it while I'm waiting for the bus or something. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm gonna go uh, stuffing this. Or, yeah, this is stuffing. Mmm. It's so crunchy mm. and light. That's good. Mm-hmm. I need a little yeah. cranberry sauce to like... Oh, this didn't, this didn't fully get this it. This feels a point. little chewy, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's still Whoa. chewy. That one didn't... It's like a taffy almost. Yeah, it's still good. It's still nice really good. Very right, tart. Here, here's the one I'm really curious about. And then what is the other meat like? Just straight up I'm meat. a little scared of the meat, meat honestly. It smells like turkey. That's different. This good. is the thing I'm the least into. Yeah. Very off-putting to have utterly dry meat. Oh, it's rehydrating in my mouth. It's fresh. I also <laughs> feed my dogs freeze-dried lamb, so it just feels a lot like dog food to me. Cool. I don't know the thing that I might be most excited about, sweet potato cast. Okay. Oh my god. Marshmallows are like, wholly different. Mmm. Mm. I like this one a lot. Because all the flavors get so concentrated. Yeah. And the freeze-dried marshmallows are great because it reminds me of the marshmallows in the Lucky Charms. Yeah, they're really dry and chewy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is oddly a good thing. Mm. Mm. Very high success rate here. Mm-hmm. All right. I've been most excited about this. Mm. It's a candy bar. Mm-hmm. I feel like you could sell this. Yeah, screw those um, uh, freeze-dried uh, ice cream sandwiches. This is where it's at. Freeze-dried yeah. freeze pumpkin pie. If I was in space, I would be very satisfied with this whole meal. Say, speaking of eating this in space, I have one more prank up my Pranksgiving sleeve. Okay. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Sola and Jess. Their continuing mission, to explore strange new cuisines, to seek out new culinary universes, to boldly go where many have gone before for corporate team-building exercises and birthdays to consume a freeze-dried Thanksgiving feast in zero gravity. This has been a challenging year for a lot of reasons, but it's really helped me realize what's important in my life, who's most important in my life, and I'm really thankful for that. And I'm thankful for all of you for believing in me, for watching me, and for giving me your support. I know Thanksgiving's gonna be weird this year, but I hope you all find a way to have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode. I took a coffee quiz, and now I'm enjoying one of the coffees I was matched with, this guy. Stay golden. It's roasted in Nashville. The beans come from Brazil. It has nice bright flavors of cherry and milk chocolate, and I especially love it as a pour over. You can say the same thing about me. First hundred people who get it. <laughs> first hundred people who sign up with you. First hundred people who sign up. First hundred people who first hundred people who sign up. <laughs> first hundred people who click the link in the video description below will receive 30% off their first bag when they sign up, plus free shipping. Free shipping. Was that okay? <laughs> Before you do that, I have uh -huh. one more prank. One more prank? One more prank? 
One more prank. Okay, but I need you to close your eyes for it. Okay. Is that weird? Hold out your hands and count to ten. Ten, nine, wait, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Good prank. Misdirection. Congratulations on hitting uh, how many offers? Twelve. Cheers. Cheers. Givings. Cheers. Givings. Cheers. Givings to you and yours.